Hi everyone, thank you again for watching yet another episode here inside the fish room of that fish place, that pet place. My name is Gabriel and today we're going to be talking about something really cool and that is going to be some smaller types of cichlids. Now a lot of people always are questioning, you know, why are cichlids always going to be a species of fish that are always going to get very large? Well, I like to recommend things that are going to stay very small. Uh, that way you can keep them inside of a community tank. Now these species specifically are the triple red cockatoides or the chrysoparamas or uh, cockatoides. So it's a lot to say, but you know what? They're really cool fish, uh, personal favorites, as they are going to have a lot of coloration along with the next fish we're going to talk about. So these fish specifically are, are going to be coming from streams and waterways from the Amazon. So they are very tropical species of fish. Now these guys are going to like temperatures of water around 74 to about 85 degrees. Not only that, but they're also going to want a pH around maybe 6.5 to 7.5. Now the reason they like that kind of lower pH on the neutral zone uh, is because these guys are going to like a soft water. With that soft water, if you have hard water, there are ways to combat it, like using pieces of driftwood. Uh, if you don't have a source of driftwood, we definitely have plenty here. So you can always come check us out and get those pieces of driftwood for yourself. Now some people always want to know, can you breed these fish? You definitely can. Now these guys are going to be a species of egg layers, but they definitely need a cave. Uh, if you don't have a cave, they're not going to feel too comfortable, so definitely get a cave. These guys are also going to want some sort of very soft substrate. Right now we do have them inside of the tank with a little pebbles and little rocks, but if you ever have a tank with sand, that'll be a little bit more preference. These guys are going to kind of dig around and kind of move some stuff around. Now, with these guys also being said, I recommend having at least a 20 gallon aquarium. Might seem a little bit big on the, uh, a little bit on the bigger end, but reason being is because these guys can get a little territorial, especially when they go into that breeding. Now you're only going to want either a pair or one male and many females. And when I say many, I mean about five or six females to every one male. That's going to present a lot more coloration for the male, and you're going to see a pure amount of beauty from him, and that's for sure. Uh, he's going to try and court the lady, uh, bring her into the cave, and once he does that, breeding is on. Now the female might get also aggressive. So if you have a spare tank, you can always remove the other females, put them in another tank or holding tank or something like that. As One more thing I want to mention about the triple red cockatoos are that the males are going to have red fins and the females are going to be more of a yellow color to them. Now the next fish we are moving on to is a phenomenal, extremely beautiful fish. Uh, I personally own these guys and they are a little bit more of an advanced keeping than the, uh, the triple reds, uh, but they're not that hard. Now, these are the blue rams. We have many species of rams along with these blue rams. Along with that, is we have electric blue rams, Bolivian rams, gold rams, long fin rams, balloon rams. As you can see, there are many species of rams. Uh, so these guys are very, very diverse, and there's many, many options of them. Personal favorites of mine are going to be the blue rams, though. Reason being is because these guys are going to have very, very intense colorations. These guys are called microgeophagus, which a lot of geophagus species are going to have lots of turquoises and lots of colors on them. So I recommend at least having a 10 gallon size of aquarium. Uh, you can have any types of substrates, but I recommend a planted substrate because these guys love plants. And that goes with any of them. You put these guys in a planted tank set up, they're going to try and court each other uh, with the males and the females, which are also a type of egg laying breeders. Uh, so if you have one male, uh, you can just keep the one male in there or have a pair. So unlike the triple reds, you're going to want a pair of these guys and not have multiple females. These guys like a one-on-one -on -one courtmanship. Uh, if you have another female in there, females might go at it. If you have another male, vice versa, the males are going to go at it with each other. So it's either one or two. Um, now, these guys are going to be omnivore eaters, so they are going to eat anything you kind of put in there. Uh, they are going to like a more high-protein diet, something like spirulinas, uh, krill, or you can have black worms, blood worms, different things like that. Get a mixed variety of a diet, and they'll even eat tropical flakes or pellets if you don't have access to frozen or live foods. These guys are also going to be something that I absolutely love to put with other fish. These are community species, along with also the triple reds. Now I'm not going to say put them with uh, Jaguar cichlids or Jack Dempsey's, which are other cichlids that are going to get pretty decently sized. Some things I recommend are maybe some angelfish, which we have right next door as well. Or you can do Garamis, Silver tip Tetras, uh, Neon Tetras, Cardinal Tetras, all the smaller guys. Anything that's going to stay about maybe two inches or even smaller than that. So if you guys enjoyed watching this video or have any questions or concerns about anything, just leave us a comment down below. We'll definitely help you out. We'll guide you in the right direction. You can always stop on in and talk to either myself, Gabriel, or any of the other associates here inside of the fish room, all right? Hope you guys enjoy your day and have a great rest of your day.